Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today I want to talk about a few items that uh, we're all looking for and are kind of expensive but I found a cheap place to buy them. First off, I want to remind you not to forget to register to win this spring compressor. We're going to give it away the 15th of next month. You want to send me an email to jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. Title it Spring Compressor, or it's going to get lost in all the hundreds of emails that I get. And again, thanks to Rodney in Ireland. He's the one that came up with this better idea. And... Uh, <clears throat> It was a awesome idea, Rodney, and again, thank you. And we're gonna give two of them away. One is welded, one is not. Uh, if you missed a video, you better watch the previous one because I talk about it. Now tonight, I wanna talk about something that my dad always used to tell me, be careful what you wish for, you may just get it. I've had a lot of people ask me about putting dual tires on the back of the snappers. Okay, I made up four sets of rods. Let me tip this thing down here a little bit. To put dual tires on your snapper. These are one inch diameter solid steel bars. They are drilled and tapped for half 20 thread, and that's the bolt that holds the tires on your snapper. How these work is you take the tires off. You do not have to take the wheel flange off. You take one of these grade 8 bolts and grade 8 lock washers. You screw them through. Now these are not, these are a different video. <clears throat> you screw them through from the back side of your wheel flange and you lock them down tight. Then when you get all three of them screwed through, put your tire on. This is, <clears throat> this is the bolt, or I should say the nut, that holds on the first tire that screws on here. Now when you have your tire on and you get all three of these on, you just want to barely snug them up because if you have any distortion in your wheel flange or in the rim itself, it is going to put these on an angle and you won't be able to get the other tire on and the bolts in. So you leave these a little loose. You put the second tire on. You use your original bolts to hold the second tire on the end of these. Now, if you look close enough, you'll see there's a flat on them. That's for a three-quarter inch wrench. You will slip it through between the two tires and lock these down tight. Now, when you screw in your original bolts to hold on the second tire, I should say they're already in, you want to tighten them up. You hold this with a wrench because when you're screwing that bolt in and trying to tighten it, it could loosen this. So you want to hold that with a wrench and then lock these down. That gives you dual tires on the back of your machine. Now I know the next question. What are you going to sell them for? I have no clue. <laughs> I've never made them before. Nobody has ever made these before. You can't buy these anywhere. This is just something I came up with. Is it safe? It will give you more traction if you have a soft and muddy yard. Like uh, I made, I can't remember what video it was. I made a set for... I can't even think of his name right now. 
to put dual tires on the front and the back of his machine because he has a spot in his yard that's very wet and he's always getting stuck. Hopefully, I haven't heard back from him yet, this is working. Now, <clears throat> obviously this is going to give you more, hopefully, traction and it is going to give you more leverage. Your, your machine is designed so this wheel flange is basically in the center of the tire. That means when your weight of your machine is bearing down, it's bearing down on the center of the tire. Now when you get this sticking out here, I wouldn't suggest running over any sidewalks or trying to mow along close to a sidewalk and getting the outside tire up on the sidewalk and having the inside tire hanging in the air. That's giving you a lot of leverage. This is not proven. I don't know how this is going to work, but if you do something like that, you could bend the half inch axle. I don't know how much force that will hold. Um, I don't see, I've got to take a look at one. It's not sticking out as far as, well, it sticks out about three inches past the bushing. And that's where you're going to get the leverage. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, most all the machines on the market today that have trans axles in them, the axle housing used to go all the way out to within maybe a half inch to an inch of the wheel. That gives it strength. Well, I talked to a couple friends of mine that worked at dealerships and I said, why all of a sudden are these transaxles shorter and the axles stick out six inches from the end of it? He says, well, John Deere came up with that idea because people were doing things with these riding lawnmowers like pulling stuff, pulling a car, trying to pull out bushes, and they would rip the gearing out of the transaxles. So what they did is they made the housing shorter, left the axle sticking out, which is the weak link. So if you try something like that and bend the axle, it voids the warranty and you have to buy a new transaxle for your machine. And from a dealership, you're probably looking at $500 to get the axle and have it installed, if you could get it that cheap. So will this work? It will, to the point it should give you more traction and soft ground. Could you have an issue? I don't know. Like I said, this has never been done before. And... Uh, I guess if you want to try it out, if you have a problem with being stuck, it's up to you. It's totally up to you. <clears throat> Personally, I would run the outside tires a little low on pressure so that they're not really bearing any load until the inside tires start to sink and you start to get stuck then the outside tires would sit on the ground and give you more I mean you got what them tires are six inches wide then you're gonna have a little gap and another tire you got 12 inches or 13 inches of width out there that's gonna be bearing on the ground so uh, I don't know what to tell you <laughs> maybe if I get one of my old machines running I'll throw a set on there and see what happens to it. But like I said, I've got four sets. And when them are gone, I don't know if I'll ever build any more. That's just one of them things that somebody said, boy, you know, I wish I could put duels on my tractor. I made them. So I've got a lot of people that said, 
If I don't win this, I want to buy one. I will be making those. Uh, gonna be busy, I think. I have two, count them, two dethatchers that go on the front of a snapper rider. I also have three that go on a walk behind, but I can't seem to find anybody that wants them. We're all looking for the ones that go on the rider, naturally. Who wants to walk when you can ride? Another thing I found that I want to let you in on. These little jewels here, these are the plugs that we put in our differential and our chain case. <laughs> I got one here in there. That is a factory plug. They are over $2 a piece. Now, this one is not a factory plug. This has a hole in it or a pocket or an indentation or whatever you want to call it. It's not flat. <laughs> this one is. And on the inside, the factory ones are pretty much flat. And this one's got a little indentation. These I found at my True Value hardware store. He has a drawer with all different sizes from like quarter inch up to an inch and a quarter or something. These are 20 cents a piece. That's right. Not two bucks. 20 cents. A snap in there just as tight. I had some fluid in here. I put in some oh, alcohol because it's actually thinner and it wicks better than water. I had no leakage on it. So I don't think your differential lube is going to leak out of there. So there you go. Two bucks, 20 cents. It's up to you. And I'm thinking we all probably have a True Value hardware somewhere close to us. So that's all I wanted to go over tonight. This kit that I built, <coughs> the uh, spring compressor, and these plugs for your differential covers. And that's about it for this one. But I just, I am just finishing dismantling my second machine. So hopefully the next video is going to be with this table saw. Let me move you over here. I got a piece of cardboard on top of my table saw and my extension table. Hopefully the next video is going to be with this covered with parts and they're going to be for sale. Uh, I've got two chain cases. I don't know if I'll dismantle them and sell them separately or just sell the whole case in one piece. I'll have all the parts out of the differentials. I've got tires, I've got mower decks, i got steering wheels. i got two complete machines stripped. And any part that looks usable or in good shape is going to be for sale. I have one seat that's in really nice shape, but it is not a snapper seat. It is an aftermarket seat, and it does not have... Um, a socket or I should say a hole for the safety seat switch <laughs> to snap into so you won't be able to use your safety switch which is probably not a good idea but it is a really nice seat <laughs> I got a couple complete mower decks one of them's really nice, the other one's pretty rusty, so it's probably just going to be stripped down for parts. Um, I've got a cover, extra cover for a mower deck, and it's not in real good shape. It's got some cracks in it. If anybody's interested, um, what else? I don't know, lost my train of thought. I'll probably have, this is the engine off of the first one. I'm going to try to rebuild that because I've only got like 
30 pounds of compression, so I'm pretty sure it needs a valve job and rings, and I'll go through that if I can get parts. If I can't, then I'll strip the engine and sell the pieces. The other engine that's on the one I'm taking apart now is seized up. I don't know what's wrong with it. It does have electric start. This thing has sat outside for a long time by the looks of the rust on it. But the seat was in really good shape, but I don't know why. So uh, that's it. Please remember to subscribe. I need your help with that issue. <clears throat> I can't subscribe to myself, which I would if I could, but I can't so I won't. You know how that goes. Please subscribe. Um, I have a lot of people keep asking me, uh, how can we support your channel? Can You don't have a, a Patreon account or I don't. I probably never will. I don't know. <clears throat> but if you want to help support my channel, subscribe. I get enough subscribers, Google will support my channel. Um, yes, I did mention I have two dethatchers for sale. And the machines that I'm stripping are the rectangular tube, not the round tube. The, I believe they're SR, what was it, 126 or something. It's the older ones. They do have bearings in the fenders. Uh, one set of fenders I am going to keep, and the other set I probably will sell. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I basically just finished my 2012. I'm toying with the idea of tearing it apart and putting the fenders on with the bearings in it. But that sounds like a lot of work. I don't know. So, keep your eyes open for the next video. I want to get rid of these parts. If you need them, give me a holler after you see the video. And um, that's it. Don't forget to, to enter to win the spring compressor. That thing is really awesome. It works so cool. And uh, <clears throat> I will be making some more for sale. How much? I don't know. I'll see how long it takes me to make them and how much I'm going to have into them. When I built these, I just bought the stuff and didn't pay attention. <clears throat> so until next time, work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. Talk to you soon. So long.